It's the show of the week. It's the show of the week. I'm wearing flannel and we're gonna talk about ragtime. That didn't sound like ragtime at all. This show is great and multifaceted and I could talk about it for hours, but the thing I enjoy most about this show is how it handles its chorus. You know this, in a lot of shows, the chorus is just the backup dancers. They're the people to come in to make the music seem bigger and to represent the outside world. Ragtime, on the other hand, I would argue is a show about a chorus. I mean, three choruses if you want to get pedantic, but that's really beside the point. There are so many almost protagonists in this show, and I think there's arguments for all of them to be the main protagonist. I have a choice who I think is the main protagonist. I'm sure you have a choice you think is the main protagonist, and they might be different, but we could justify them, and that's one of the things that is so effective about this musical. Because Ragtime is a show that's not about a person, it's not about an event, it's about an era and the feeling that comes with it. And that's even embodied in the way that Aaron's and Flaherty use the music Ragtime as a motif throughout the show. I mean, you listen to that first number and it's all about that distant music, that distant Ragtime music. It's the sound of something that's coming and it literally starts out softly and grows and grows and grows. And it's really a direct metaphor for the racial tension that was present in the turn of the century in America. And boom, it's just dropped on you in one musical motif, all sung by this gigantic, multifaceted chorus. Really, it's that prologue that does it for me. Now, there are a lot of complex opening numbers. You take into the woods and, you know, it. by the time we start the show and by the time we finish the first number, we've gone through about it feels like 16 different songs. But that's the cool part about the opening of Ragtime. It is very clearly one song that all of these core individual chorus members kind of morph in and out of. And you have this little glimpse into these people's lives and this little glimpse into that person's life. And it's still maybe three or four songs before we even meet all the protagonists of the show. That's cool. That's original. What a way to start us. And then, of course, as the show goes on, we get more details of all these different previously chorus members' life as they come and kind of worm their way out of the woodwork. But I can't, I was sitting here thinking about this, and I can't think of another show that introduces various different characters as part of the chorus first. There's something about that that creates a, a, a very kind of large, epic, feel to the whole thing, it's really neat. And it's beautiful, and it's really sad, and really moving, and is definitely a commentary on lots of things going on in America right now. And that's what makes it a great musical. And that's what makes it the show of the week. And that's what makes it something that you should listen to. Go listen to Ragtime. I'll see you next week. Bye. Internet, Jimmy. Thought I was gonna bash Ragtime the Musical. Who could possibly bash Ragtime the Musical? I mean, it does have in kind of an overly complex plot, which I think, you know, kind of kind of did it in in its original production on Broadway. That combined with its its large cast, which costs a lot of money, which is really not a good way to structure a musical if you wanted to make money, because that's sort of a, a thing you want to do if you want a show to continue. But who could bash Ragtime? I mean, it is a little long, and there are a lot of characters to keep straight, which can get a little difficult sometimes. But but who could who could possibly possibly hate on this show.